In this lesson, we will specifically look at esterification and the bonding between organic molecules. So when we look at esterification, we look at the, firstly, we look at the conditions that are required. So for every organic reaction, we have conditions that we need to meet in order for those reactions to take place. Now for esterification, we have our conditions are we need an acid catalyst and we need heat. If we have those two and the correct react reactants, we will form an ester and water. So the lone pair on the alcohol attack the bonded pair, the polar bond in the CO in the carboxylic acid, as we show below. So if we have a carboxylic acid, as we have over here, and an alcohol, as we have over here, we will form an ester and we will form water, which is our second product. So when you have a carboxylic acid over here, we can see our C with our double bond oxygen over here and our alcohol over here. We can see that in the reaction, we have our alcohol on the right over here and our carboxylic acid over here. The bonded O that we see over here will then bond with the O from this bond between our carbon and our oxygen in our carboxylic acid breaks and the oxygen from our alcohol then bonds with our carbon from our carboxylic acid. Our oxygen and our hydrogen from our carboxylic acid and the hydrogen from our alcohol then react to form water. In this way, we are left with the this C double bond O, we are left with that from the acid and the oxygen is comes from the alcohol over here and bonds to the C in the carboxylic acid to form a, an ester. Now we know that this is the functional group for an ester and in this process we have therefore formed an ester. And we must not forget that our two H's and our O form H2O in the form of water as our second product. So an ester is formed as we've said here is our ester and water is condensed in the reaction from this process over here. Then we look at intermolecular forces and the physical properties of organic molecules. So there are three things that will affect this. Firstly, it's our chain length, our, then our functional group, and lastly, our branching. So when we look at chain length, our, as our chain length increases, our electron density increases. Hence, there's greater distortion of electron cloud there's an unequal distribution, another way to say that, resulting in greater temporary dipoles and thus more London forces. Therefore, more energy is required to break these bonds. So as we've said, a larger surface area allows more interaction and therefore contributes to larger forces. So an increased chain length will lead to greater London forces and therefore more energy is, is required to break these intermolecular forces. When we look at functional groups, we need to know that these are additional to London forces that occur. So every molecule will have London forces. However, in addition to those, some certain types of organic molecules will have additional intermolecular forces. So our non-polar non molecules, such as our canes, our and our kinds, will simply have London forces. There are no extra forces. Our polar molecules, such as esters and haloalkanes, will have dipole-dipole, so therefore they will require more energy, therefore have stronger intermolecular bond than we see in our non-polar molecules. Our alcohols form one H-bond, one hydrogen bond, which we know is very strong and therefore require more energy than our polar and our non-polar. And our carboxylic acids are able to form two hydrogen bonds, and therefore they are even stronger and require even more energy to be broken and therefore a, a intermolecular force between carboxylic acids are the strongest that organic molecules can have. Here we look at branching. So when we look at branching, straight chains have a higher boiling point due to larger surface area for interaction. And branch chains have a lower boiling point due to lower surface area for interactions. So simply more branches equals a lower boiling point. As we increase our branching, our surface area of our molecule decreases. Therefore, there are less contact points for van der Waals forces to form. So when we look at branching, we simply look at our surface area. And if our surface area is decreased, then our van der Waals forces cannot form 
and our boiling point will be lower, which means that less energy is required to overcome those intermolecular forces. Then lastly, we just need to have a look at melting points. So melting points can be affected by physical properties. You must always remember that. And they may ask you a question where it looks like the melting point is incorrect because if we look at our intermolecular forces, it should not have the melting point that they say it has. And often they will ask you this and you simply need to know that symmetrical molecules have a higher boiling point due to their packing in solid state. Once in liquid, they follow the normal trend. So if they were to give you a solid molecule and you realize that the melting point is out of line with what you believe it should be, and they may do this. I have seen it before personally in the test and an exam. You need to know that certain molecules will have a high melting point due to their packing in solid state. You won't be required to know the in-depth chemistry behind it. You will simply need to state that in solid state, they, due to their packing, they will have a higher melting point. And that will be sufficient to answer the question.